How's it going guys? Today we're going to be going sowing some multi-species. Uh, during the week there we got some dung spread on the field we had sprayed off and we're doing some work on. We got it all rotivated yesterday so today we're going to sow the grass seed. What are we sowing it with? This is our air seeder tine harrow. We made up this tiny harrow ourselves. Any of you follow me on Instagram will have seen a lot about this. The frame here was a old cultivator, a, a digger, kind of a, what to call it? Yeah, an old cultivator. And we basically took the legs off that and we bought these tines and we bolted them on. We got four rows of tines. Uh, they're straight down spring tines and they are about six inches apart. I think there's about a foot or so between each row and all, all the rows are offset from each other. We also put some wire rope in case any of them break off so we don't lose them. So the reason we decided to first make the tine harrow was for uh, bits of ground that might get a bit poached or reddened during the springtime when ground conditions are wet that we could just run over the tine harrow to kind of smooth it off and we wanted a way of applying some grass seed then to help rejuvenate that. And that's where we got this stock ag uh, air seeder. Stock ag rotometer. So we got this from Vantage Ireland. This is the uh, Icon controller one, I think it's called. Um, we bought this off them. They were very kind to give us a bit of a discount to get this seeder out onto our tiny house so that we could show you what it's like. So it's basically, there's a feeder house in here there's a, it's a hundred, this is a big hopper and you can get two different hoppers. This is the big one, it's 130 liters. You can get a smaller one and it'll go through a feeder roll here out into these three pipes and it'll be blown out. Uh, it'll spit here and go down to these little splash pits. We'll get in here now. Uh, and then the, spree, the seed just sprinkles along. I have not used this yet. We. Uh, <laughs> We got, we got the air seeder installed there a few months ago and uh, I did use the tine harrow already but um, since we put the air seeder on the weather was very dry we didn't get to use it um, and we've had rain last while so we're going so in this field now. So because this is the Icon one I'll show you the controller I have it in the tractor it's got its own little GPS which basically means when I set the rate of what I want it will It'll sow that rate no matter what speed I drive. It should give me a range that I can drive in. And if I speed up or slow down, it'll just the flow of seeds so that it puts out the, the right rate all the time. And uh, I thought that would be really handy for, you know, if you're doing those patches, it's one thing if you're going up and down the field, you can control the speed a little more. But if you're doing little patches and things and turning around, it might be rough. Uh, this would be a better job. And there's also a little uh, lift switch on it. Hopefully we have this set up right, that when I lift it and drop it, a lot of money turn on now. Although I say we built it full credit to my father, Podrick, he is the engineer and the one who put this all together. I was really only involved in some of the discussion of the design and how it would work. I'm going to be using this for a couple of different things. We're also, we're going to reseed this. Obviously we have rotivated the field, so it's all tilled up and we're going to sow with this now and we're going to roll it after. But I also plan to direct drill or stitch with this tine harrow. Just go straight in to spray it off ground and no cultivation and see how that works. Um, if that works, that would be great. So we have power. And this was originally, we had a wire going from the battery straight through under the machine um connected we did that when it was on the 100 and then um i kind of realized that there is power here so it's wired straight from the battery up to here in the cap so i was like if i can connect the wire here i can leave it with the air seeder which means i can put it on any tractor rather than the cable to power it being stuck on one tractor so this is the icon controller we will be able to set our rate and this will be able to control the cedar then. Right, so here we are, we're sewing. Uh, I have my GPS here for guidance, which is working out handy. 
means I don't have to turn on the headlands. Uh, I can just do sets, um, which is great. My unit here, that's my rate. I'm going out 45 kilos a hectare, so nice and heavy. That's about 18 kilos an acre. And then that green bar tells me how much, so I can go faster, but uh, I'm not going to bother rev it up or change up a gear from where I am. I'm in the top gear of this range, so I don't want to go up until the next range. See the way on the last run of this set. Um, it's working out quite nice. I think it's working really well. The real test will be when uh, when it germinates and starts growing, and we'll see how it has worked there. Uh, this tine harrow is a bit aggressive for soil that's already tilled up for the rotavator. So you'll see I literally have it just hovered over the ground. It's only tickling the soil. Um, there is a lift switch on the air seeder so when I drop it off and let it down it automatically cuts in and out. Which is very handy. I'm really liking this cedar. Um, it's working. It's working really well. I like the way it, it, it keeps the rate no matter what speed I drive. It just gives me more flexibility. But it's working. It's working very well. Plus, it, it, I can also check the level. So I have only five kilos left, so we're coming near the end of it. There's also a, a level sensor on it, so when it runs out, it will start beeping at me. One thing would be cool is if I could wire it to the GPS, the, at least the lift switch to the GPS, it would cut off my paint area when I lift it. Just in the 100 here, finishing off the rolling. It's coming together nicely now. Made off this field uh, actually a good while ago. Um, we were quite busy and there was a bit more work to do than I expected. Uh, we had to clean out the dike and then fence it, and we had to uh, do a bit more plowing. I knew we had to do that, but I didn't think the dike was as bad and needed to be cleaned out as much. So. We said we'd do it while we were receding anyway, and we got all that done, spread the dung on it, and rotated it in. So, yeah, and then fired out the seed, we're rolling it now. Just might come out in a couple of days and uh, pick a couple of stones, just a few. It's fairly good, fairly clean, but a couple of big stones around there. So, we might pick them, the ones that the roller didn't squash into the ground. So it's a multi-species after going in here and um, on the cedar when I worked it out I was going for 45 kilos per hectare and it worked out as 41 so um, I could have maybe done another calibration on it but it's not too bad not too far off on that big of a field so um, I will I'll know for future anyway with uh, calibrating it maybe a little bit more a little bit more precise that's all for today's video guys thanks very much for watching I'll see you in the next one